now that we've got some idea of how uh, boundary layers respond to pressure gradients, um, and we've developed our boundary layer equations, let's look at integral boundary layer relations, which in general, in terms of figuring out the effect of a boundary layer on an airflow, uh, in terms of the generation of drag and the effect on lift, are more useful than directly solving the boundary layer equations themselves. So let's start with momentum. So if we combine uh, the mass conservation boundary layer equation and the S momentum boundary layer equation and multiply the mass flow part by UE minus U, uh, we get an equation that looks like this. And if we were to integrate this equation across the boundary layer from n equals 0 to n equal n e, we would get dBs of rho e u e squared theta is equal to tau wall minus rho e u e squared delta star d u e ds. Again, this is the mass deficit, M of S, and this is called the von Karman integral momentum equation. You can also write this in shorthand is DPDS equals wall shear stress plus delta star DPDS versus the pressure gradient. This is capital P, the momentum defect. If we divide by rho e u e squared, then we get the dimensionless version of this equation, which is d theta ds equals Cf over 2 minus h plus 2 minus m e squared theta over u e d u e d s. Here, h is delta star over theta, which is called the boundary layer shape parameter. We'll see later that this parameter is important as a predictor of flow separation. Cf is the skin friction coefficient, which is just tau wall over one half rho e u e squared. And me which is just UE over AE, is the edge Mach number. Now, ME appears for the general case, but we're only going to consider incompressible flow where ME is zero, so we can drop this term. Now, we can obtain a kinetic energy equation in exactly the same way. doing a combined manipulation of the mass conservation and momentum equations, and this gives us dds of one-half u squared minus u squared rho u plus ddn one-half u e squared minus u squared rho v equals minus u rho e minus rho u e d e e d s 
minus u e tau dn. Now again, we integrate from n equals 0 to n equals ne, and we get dBs of 1 half rho e u e cubed theta star, our kinetic energy thickness, is equal to a new factor, curse of d, which I'll explain in a moment, minus rho e u e cubed delta double star d u e d s or in short version d k d s where k is our kinetic energy de defect is equal to d plus e Delta star, or delta double star, uh, dPDS. So here, delta double star is defined as the integral across the boundary layer of one minus rho over rho e u over u e dn, and this is called the density flux this thickness. And we can see that for incompressible flow, this will just be zero. So this entire second term will drop away. The other term is also defined by an integral across the boundary layer of the shear stress, which we can write in terms of the viscosity and the turbulent viscosity. This is called a dissipation integral, and it's basically the rate of viscous heating, the rate at which uh, energy is being dissipated into heat due to viscous effects in the boundary layer. Now, if we divide by 1 half rho e u e cubed, we get a dimensionless form again, where now we can say this is d theta star ds is equal to 2c cursive d, so this is not a drag coefficient, it's a dissipation coefficient, minus 2 h double star over h star plus 3 minus m e squared theta star over u e d u e yes so here h star is theta star over theta and this is the kinetic energy shape parameter H double star is delta double star over theta, and this is the density flux shape parameter. And as I mentioned, the CD is a dissipation coefficient which is the dissipation integral over rho e, e cubed. The dimensional form is seen to govern the evolution of the kinetic energy defect, while the dimensionless form governs the evolution of the uh, theta star the uh, kinetic energy thickness. This is used in some advanced uh, boundary layer methods um, that we'll touch on very briefly later on. Note that for incompressible flow, the density flux shape parameter is zero because delta star double star must be zero. So this term goes away. And also, if we're in incompressible flow, the edge Mach number is zero, so this term goes away. So this simply becomes the theta star ds equals two times the dissipation coefficient minus three 
set a star over UE, UEDS, which is a quite a bit simpler equation. 